There's a deathly hush in the studio as Sonia Saul prepares to take the most important shot of the game. Welcome to Bad Influence. On today's show, a load of balls. We'll be looking at attempts to make virtual reality versions of pool and snooker. And you know, it took the crew four hours to set up those balls in exactly the right position. Later on, our special guest, Fiona Dolman, from the new fighter pilot drama Strike Force, will try out the amazing flight sim EF2000. Yeah! That's another 20 pence, you Emmy Andy. All right. We've got a great competition prize today. The world's first super handheld virtual boy, complete with some games. And I'll be on the planet Solaris 7, taking part in a new team sport that's connecting up America. This is the newest type of pool table. The L shape in the extra pocket changes the way you play the game, but the rules are the same as normal pool. Oh, shame. Pool started to become really popular in the 70s, mainly because it's easier to fit one of these tables into a bar or club than a gigantic snooker table. Oh. But if pool tables are still too big for your game room, there's always computerised pool. This is one of the first games ever for the Sinclair ZX Spectrum. It's called Pool. It was released in 1982 and used a top view of the table because it made it easier to calculate the position of the balls, but it wasn't very realistic and it just didn't catch on. Faster computers like the Atari ST here led to better pool games. This is 3D Pool, the first attempt at a pool game with a real player's view. The ball motion still wasn't very realistic. Not too surprising because the balls are a bit jagged. Also, calculating how each ball moves takes loads of computer power, which meant the balls jerk around rather than roll. The first game that got it right was Jimmy White's whirlwind snooker for the Atari ST and Amiga. It was the first real snooker simulator. Crafty programming trips gave it all the elements of real play. You even had to chalk your cue to play a trick shot. And speaking of cues, cue Sonia. Thanks, Andy. This is the state-of-the-art computer pool simulator. Virtual pool on the PC CD-ROM. The game allows you to look at the table from anywhere in the virtual pool room. The motion of the balls was modelled by NASA scientists and is very realistic. And the game comes with an animated history of pool, playing tips and a truckload of trick shots. You use the mouse in the same way that you'd use a cue. Just pull it back and push it forward to hit the shot. The harder you move the mouse, the more powerful the shot. So, Fiona, you've been playing on this for a while. What do you think of it? I think it's absolutely brilliant. It's a great game. The best thing about it is that you can do these trick shots. Right. Let's see, watch this. Oh, very impressive. So I suppose you do prefer this to the real game? Most definitely, I think, yes. Yeah, <laughs> but it takes a lot to beat the clicking of the balls, the feeling of the bays underneath your fingers, the ecstasy of putting that eight ball and the agony of giving your money to Sonia every time you lose. Our main review this week is the new PC game Command & Conquer. It's set in the traditional bleak future, the world's remaining superpowers battling it out for control of Tiberium, a vital new mineral. You choose to fight for either the goody-goody Global Defence Initiative or the nasty-nasty Brotherhood of Nod, then begin the task of wiping your enemies from the face of the Earth. Initially, you're equipped with a few tanks and a small amount of troops, but as more missions are completed, an arsenal of exotic weapons becomes available. Everything can be controlled by simple point and click, ensuring that your commands are speedily carried out. With detailed graphics, real-time action and a chance to play the baddies, could Command & Conquer at last be a war game that isn't boring? Here's Sir Hale. This is not your typical war game. It's not just mindless shooting. You need to use a lot of strategy to play it properly. I'm in the middle of a game here, and the tanks I've just selected, I've decided to send south to collect that bonus crate. Up in the north here, the guys in red, who are the opposition, are invading my Tiberian field, so I have to destroy those. Here I'm going to build a barracks, but I'm not sure where I should place it at the moment. I think I'll put it next to that construction site. Once you've actually built your barracks, it enables you to get more men and train them up to do what you want them to do. There's all sorts of different soldiers. I think I'll choose a grenadier. He's almost done now, Unit and ready. there he is, ready to be sent into battle. Unit lost. Yes, I've just selected my units to protect my base, which is under attack by the Red Army Building. there. They've got tanks and rocket launchers, whereas I've only got a few foot soldiers, a couple of rocket launchers Unit and a motorbike. Building. So to be honest, Unit it doesn't lost. look too hopeful from where I'm standing. This is where the strategy element of the game comes into play. Unit you can lost. control your units Unit individually Unit. or as a group, Building. which is good so you can focus your attacks. Ah. The best thing about this game is the two-player option. The only snag is you need a friend who's got a copy of the game and a PC. 
At first, the action may seem a little slow and the terrain a little daunting, but it's definitely one worth sticking with. Once you're into the gameplay, you just won't want to put it down. I could sit and play this for hours. It just feels like you're conquering the world. It was so engrossing. It's a really good game. The graphics and soundtrack are excellent. The gameplay is really challenging, and overall, it's an excellent war game. And the scores for Command and Conquer are conquering five for both the boys and the girls. So fives all round for Command and Conquer, which is the first time it's happened this series at least. What was your favourite bit? I think the fact that you can actually, as well as move like the whole army or the whole fleet, you can move each little man you know, on his own and send him on his own little mission. I quite like that. That's good, isn't it? <laughs> Hours spent hunched over a computer screen playing strategy games can be a bit sad and lonely. But it doesn't have to be that way, as Violet now reports from Los Angeles. Right, let me see now. Uh, energy chocolate bar, crisp. I think that's enough. Drink in case I get thirsty. Uh, plasters in case I get any injuries. I think that's it. Have you guessed yet? Oh, yeah, I must limber up. It's Sunday morning in L.A. Some people are off playing football. Others might be off playing baseball. But the game I'm about to take part in is a little unusual. For one thing, my team won't even get to meet the opposition. This is Virtual World, and we're here to play Battletech, a strategy shoot-em-up which has teams of mech warriors from all over the universe, well, all over America, taking part in gladiatorial combat at the controls of 30-foot humanoid war machines called Battle Mechs. This virtual world centre is in Pasadena, which is just outside Los Angeles, and the team we're up against are in Walnut Creek, which is about 400 miles that away. Now, you might think that if we want to play them, we've got to fly there first, but no, because from right here in Pasadena, we can play against any other team at any other virtual world site in the US, and it's all done on the internet. The key to the whole system is this box in here. It's just a modem that links the computer in Pasadena up with the computer that runs the games in all the other sites. Now, the only difference between this modem and the ones that you and I can buy is that this one can send information about ten times more quickly. Both teams are ejected into the drop zone, and then it's kill or be killed. Of course, the idea is not to die. When you get another battle mech in your sights, the name of the pilot comes up on screen, so you can identify your own team from your enemies. That's Gypsy on the Walnut Creek team. Time to blast. Mikey, you're too far away. you got to come back here. Go back to the fight. The great thing about this game is the tactics. You can help out your teammates and let them know if they're in danger. And you can also gang up on an injured opponent. Uh, Thunder Bear only has one leg. This green one's got one leg, I'm going to get him. Yes! Yes! Whoa! Rick, where are you? I'm coming in off the drop zone right now. We keep the pod doors open to make it easier to communicate. Now, the good news is I'm playing with three of the best players in the league. One shot, you're dead, I'll die. The downside is, I can't keep up. One, one leg. <laughs> How's the team doing, Rick? Oh, I like to be it. Who won? Ah, looks like we lost. And this is the last bit of technical wizardry, a video phone, so you can see and talk to the team you're up against face to face. Actually, on the line now, I've got Gypsy, who I reckon I hit quite a lot. Hey, Gypsy, are you there? Yes, I am. Hello. Hi. Now, uh, how did I do? You did extremely well. Yeah, I think so. You heard it from him. This is Violet Berlin and Gypsy reporting in Pasadena and Walnut Creek for Bad Influence at Virtual World. By the way, girls, please don't think that these virtual world centres are just for spotty, geeky guys. Viola did report when she was in LA that she noticed there were <laughs> loads of girls there too, so it is one for everybody. And you can now try the virtual world experience here in the UK. They've just set up a site at the Trocadero Centre in London. They haven't got an internet link yet, but they're hoping to have that up and running next year. So look out for a UK challenge to the Pasadena champions.
and they're about to launch a completely revamped game. We sneak these shots out of a computer graphics show in America. It's called System 4, and the pods will have new sound units with more subwoofers and tweeters than you'd find in a box full of dogs and a crate of canaries. And there's been a very stylish overhaul on screen as well, with the blocky old-style graphics replaced with a crisp new 3D look. System 4 is scheduled to arrive in the UK early next year, but now some more of this week's releases reviewed by our expert panel. Rayman is out now on the PlayStation and Jaguar and soon to be released on the Saturn. Like most heroes, our flexible friend has to defeat the baddies and free the captives. The story so far, the evil Mr. Dark has stolen the Great Platoon, a mystical calming power source, and has imprisoned all the good guys. Here with the Jaguar version is Angela. The first two levels are a walkover, far too easy. But as you progress, the game becomes much harder. He's a cute, lovable little character, and the aim of the game is to guide him through each level, finding the electoons and setting them free. It's a very big game, there's over 60 levels in it. This is a difficult bit, but one good point is that you can collect power-ups, which enable you to add to his abilities, like his helicopter hair. Another good feature is the save game option. I just couldn't put this game down, there's so much going on. It's a real challenge and fun with it. Even though the graphics are the best I've seen on any platformer, there are no features which make it stand out. The character is quite comical, with his helicopter hair and his detachable hands. But for me, the gameplay is a bit slow and it becomes boring after a while. And the scores for Rayman. The boys only an average three, but the girls liked it a bit better and gave it four. Gentlemen, start your engines. Will spin on the Amiga is out next week. There are four types of car to choose from and 80 different drivers. But will this send you racing to the shops or round the bend? Here's Ben. A racing game with miniature cars isn't very original, but the ability to beef them up with extras is a nice feature. This is the two-player mode. It's very hard to see where you're going because of the split screen. Where racing on the ice track, it's very hard to control. One of the useful tactics is to knock off your opponent, especially if you're behind. There are four different kinds of cars, but I don't think it makes much difference which car you're using. It's very slow compared to some of the recent racing games on the Amiga. One of the few things I liked was the shop, which allows you to customise your car. If you want a good overhead racing game for the Amiga, I suggest Super Skid Marks or Micro Machines, not this. The gameplay is OK, but the controls are a bit too sensitive and the sound is boring. The awkward controls make it difficult to handle the vehicles. This game could have been so much better. And the scores for Will Spin, mm, not a runaway success, but the boys and the girls gave it a two. If you've ever wanted to be like Tom Cruise in Top Gun but couldn't quite afford the plane, then this game is probably the nearest to it you're going to get. EF2000 places you in the cockpit of the futuristic Eurofighter in the skies over Norway, where, rather conveniently for your Top Gun ambitions, a war has broken out. The game can be played as a complex simulator or, for those without a degree in aeronautics, a simplified arcade-style game. Your missions involve shooting down planes, bombing ships, even busting dams. But watch out, Fiona, you're going to crash! One of the game's most innovative features is the virtual cockpit, which means with the mere flick of a switch, you can survey the surrounding environment for inbound bogies, check your controls, or even look at your knees. The software is so realistic that NATO is going to use it to train its real pilots with. And to make the experience complete for Fiona, we've given it a full flight control system. We've got rudder pedals, a high-tech throttle control, and this funky joystick, giving her a total of 17 buttons to play with. So, Fiona, what do you think of it? Ooh. Well, it's great. The, the main difference with this one and the RAF one that we used on the show was that um, you can actually see the, the countryside. You, know, you can see the land, which is brilliant. Um, and also the seat and the vibrations, it makes you feel like you're doing the real thing. So All right. Great. So tell me about Strike Force then. What's it about? It's basically about a group of fighter pilots and navigators um, who are supposed to be the best in the RAF. And they're brought together um, for a training mission and basically they want to select a squadron who are going to be the NATO task force and sort of respond to world disasters, that kind of thing. Uh -huh. And what's your so role? I'm playing Flight Lieutenant Sarah Kite who is the only female pilot out of all of them, so it's a great part. Right, well, you can catch her on Strike Force on October the 14th. And if I practice, maybe I could be a Top Gun too.
<laughs> come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. You oh, nearly oh, crashed. There's some more, there's some more. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, come on. No, 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 you're going down again. Girls, girls, you're so aggressive. You've been playing too many war games. You need to be calm and gentle like me. If you're hot, sweaty and irritable, you need advice from a cyber hippie like Violet. Some people say that computer games make you antisocial, negative and aggressive. Well, those people should just go away and let us chase all monsters to death in peace. Anyway, I found something that should keep those people quiet. A puzzle game that's designed to make you think hard and feel positive. The game plays a strange cross between Breakout and a Rubik's Cube, but there's more to it than that. It's called Endorphin, and the designers claim that as you play it, the graphics stimulate your brain, causing it to release natural chemicals called endorphins, which make you feel good. And just in case that doesn't work, the soundtrack contains a selection of subliminal messages hidden in the music that tell you how great you are. Life force flows through me. I am now clearing my mind of negative beliefs. I can do anything. Other messages include, I love myself, and the rather sinister, we are glad you were born. Ah, 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 ah. Just the thought of being fed all those secret messages makes me feel distinctly queasy. And all that stuff about releasing chemicals in the brain is distinctly suspect. Anyway, is it really necessary? There are no hidden messages in Virtua Fighter, but pulling off a good move still makes you feel pretty positive. And other games like Command and Conquer bring a smile to your face simply by being so superb. What more do you want? Mm, yeah, from a virtual girl to a virtual boy. Mm. Oh, oh Andy. 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 Yeah, good. This strange looking device is the virtual boy. It's the successor to the Game Boy and it's like a super handheld with a difference. All the games are in 3D. Inside the headset are two high resolution monitors, one for each eye, showing their own picture of the game in red against black and it's having two pictures that produces the 3d effect now at home you're watching in two dimensions so you'll have to take my word for it but the 3d is really very effective there's a great feeling of depth when you play the games this is a tennis game with mario yoshi and all his mates but there are tons of others there's a shoot 'em up called red alarm this terrific pinball game called galactic pinball and Teller a Boxer, a brilliant boxing combat game. Why are all the games in red? Well, apparently, red is the colour that puts the least drain on batteries. Ooh. This is one of only a few Virtual Boys in the country at the moment, and the rumour that reaches us is they're not going to release it over here at all. So this could become a collector's item, and in fact, we're giving it away this week as our competition prize. The competition question, 3D stands for three dimensions. Height, width and length. But what is the fourth dimension? Is it A, space, B, depth, or C, time? Phone in your answer on 0891 800 300. That's 0891 800 300. The call will cost you no more than 25p. The lines will stay open until midnight on Sunday, but do please get permission from whoever pays the phone bill before you dial. And we always check to make sure you have. And remember, you can't win if you don't ask permission. Now, last week's competition prize was a two. A count on two PlayStations with a two-player lead and games. And we asked what was the name of the very first video game. The name was Computer Space. Now, we had over 15,500 entries, but the winner is Andy Crabb from Newport in the Isle of Wight. Well done, dude. Ten runners up, get bad crew t-shirts. And their names are running across the screen as I speak now. Remember those trick shots you mentioned on Virtual Pool? Well, this is just one of them. Oh, yes. Here we go. Uh, hold on, hold on. Wow, wow, four ain't bad, but we'll leave you with the expert version. Ta-ra. Bye-bye. We call this Noga Park first. This is called the butterfly shot. We're going to make the one ball in the left-hand corner, two ball in the right-hand corner, three ball in the left-hand side, four ball in the right-hand side, five ball in the lower left-hand corner, six ball in the lower right-hand corner. Yes, 